Well, we have a legend joining us this morning, Funke Oshonaike, a Nigerian table tennis player, a woman who loves giving back to the society. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, your fans out there would love to know this. How have you been able to stay strong in the game? <laughs> First of all, I think it's God, you know. And apart from that, I love what I'm doing. I have passion for table tennis. I am a very, very disciplined woman. I give up my all to table tennis. And I've been so lucky, maybe because um, when I started in Nigeria, Nigeria loves sports so very much, you know. There was so much funding. I had a good father, you know, that supported me, my brother that I started with, a good coach at the state level, a good state, a good coach at the natural national level so in all together it, it it was very good when i first when i first started and like i said i still love what i'm doing so in anything i'm doing i like to give my 100 percent um thing so um, that's exactly what i've been doing mm. now let's talk about the game of table tennis is the training because people have been asking how the training process is is this as uh, tedious as we have in other sports are there um, injuries suffered in the game of game of table tennis uh, table tennis is the fast, fastest sport in the world, you know, because you have to be able to think fast, you know. Yes. Second, if you don't really think, the ball is gone. And, um, yeah, it's very, very tedious. People don't know that you can get injury, too. Because I remember there was a time I got a um, shoulder injury. I couldn't play for, like, um, for like four, four to five weeks, you know. It was for a very long time. And apart from that, you can have a um, tight injury, like the one that Aruna Kadri is having right now. You can even have back injury, you know, waist injury, a lot of injury, knee injury that can take you out for a very long time because I have... I'm like a player in Egypt that stopped because of the knee injury. So table tennis, you can actually have big injury. But people are looking at it the way they are seeing it outside. But if they really have to look at the professional, the way they are playing with all the movement, you know, you will really know that, you know, you can really get injured with table tennis. Mm. Now, let's talk about the game in Nigeria now. What do you think are the major challenges we are facing and how do you think this can be fixed? The number one challenge we have, we need uh, more good coaches. We don't have enough of them, you know. In Europe or everywhere all over the world, the only thing you can see is that um, they are professional athletes. The one that have represented their country will later on be a coach, you know. That is how they, they are doing in Europe. But in Nigeria, is is different, you know. But one thing I know is that if you can only give what you have. If, if you don't have it, you, you, you can't give it. So most of the coaches we have in um, Nigeria, they are not all that professional. Hey, I'm not saying all of them because I don't want anybody attacking me. <laughs> because they don't actually like to hear the truth, mm. but that is the truth. They need to go out there for more courses. If the government cannot help them, which I hope the government can help. Maybe they, maybe they can save some money to go out to do more courses so that they can really know what is happening out there. But the most important thing is the you know the good athlete like Shevon Toriola and the ones that have been there before. Nigeria can actually employ them or give them some contract to come back to, to, to help with because there's nothing like give be, be giving out what you have inside of you. And apart from that, we, not, we need funding. Without funding, we cannot do anything because if you have to see the world ranking of the girls or the boys, it is only Aruna or GD or Motayo that go out for international competition, you know, because of what? Because of the fact that they don't have funding to, to sponsor the other artists. So we need funding. We need more training. And training is not enough, you know. We need more competition in Nigeria. I started with a lot of competition in Nigeria. I remember back then in Nigeria, we used to have like a competition like every month so in a year we can have like 12 competitions but right now you it is hard for you to actually see like four competitions in a year mm. you know so we need all that without that it's going to be hard for for, for for the for the players in nigeria to to be improving we just hope that you know government because i don't think that um ntf can do it alone i just hope that the, the government or the corporate bodies or private companies or whoever can come to our head and help table tennis. 
Now, there's a growing concern about the young sportsmen and women who really want to do well in the game of table tennis and they seek greener pastures outside Nigeria. Do you think it is right for them to go out there to um, get this money or should they remain here and grow their game? But before you answer, uh, let's listen to the former president of the Nigeria Table Tennis Federation, Enito Oshodi. He, he spoke about this and when we come back, we would like to get your reaction. It's actually the bane of our sport generally and it's, it's happening in table tennis people traveling out before they're ready you know they don't have the basic discipline to even live abroad we then ends up affecting their game and then they get of course because when you're not playing well for your club you get sent back to <laughs> to Nigeria and then it's a bad cycle that we're trying to stop and we can only stop that by doing tournaments here getting the good coaches in here so we develop our own players to the level not only um, with their skills, but mentally be ready to go abroad as well. So hopefully, if we can have a lot more tournaments, they're making a bit of money here as well, because money is very critical to the, this young players. So if they're making the money to stay here. Now, how would you want to react to, uh, to that? What, what am I going to say? He said it hard, you know. <laughs> if we have enough competitions in Nigeria, you know, the way it used to be, and they are getting more money, they don't need to go anywhere. You see, a lot of these kids, you know, they are not from a way to do families like that, and they need money. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they keep training and they don't get competition, why do they have to stay in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't even tell my son to stay in Nigeria if there's nothing going, going in for him. And apart from that, remember, he said that they have to be disciplined. It is very, very important. Because if you come to Europe, you're on your own. You're, you have to do a lot of things on your own. So if you're not disciplined, you cannot be able to survive here in Europe. And if you're not good or you're not winning your, your games, your matches, you know, you won't have another contract. Mm. So Barista Ocean actually said everything and I supported everything he said. 100 poor. So it is very, very important that the players have to be disciplined. We need to have more competition. We need fundings. We need programs. We need good coaches, like he said, mm. so that the athletes can improve. When we have all this thing together, and before I forget, we need even league matches in Nigeria too. If we have league matches in Nigeria, they won't even bother to go to other country for league matches. So all together, yeah. we need everything that you talk about. All right. Thank you very much, Funke, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. And remember, stay safe. Yes.